this last piece is like game over. When you take the time to apply this, you will, with everything within you, simply become disciplined. If you've been struggling with discipline, you're in the right place <laughs> because today's perspective is coming at you from a human who has deeply, deeply struggled with discipline her whole life. And when I started to understand some of the psychology, it kind of became a no brainer as to why a lot of us struggle with discipline, despite it being one of those things that we all yearn for. And part of this video is coming off the back end of a video we did a couple of weeks ago where we talked about disciplined delusion being a very potent key to manifestation. And one of you said, well, that's a great theory, but how do, how do, we, how do we be disciplined? <laughs> right? So this is what we're going to break down today. I'm going to give you some very easy yet foundational hacks to almost fall in love with the process of discipline, if that makes any sense, because no one wants to beat themselves into order. And if you do, you're not on the right channel. There are a lot of channels that will tell you to do that. This place is really to get you into a space of, I'm excited to be disciplined. <laughs> It makes me happy to be disciplined. It's a driver of life force energy to be disciplined. So if that's your vibe, keep on watching. For those of you who are new, welcome to the channel. Welcome back to all the subscribers. On this channel, we learn to love ourselves unconditionally and we manifest our dream realities. So if that is something you're interested in, you should consider subscribing. And hi, my name is Atena. I didn't even say my name. Okay, so the reason why discipline is like you want it, but yet a part of you completely resists is just taking a moment to understand what the definition of discipline is. And I actually Googled it, okay? The practice of training people to obey rules or codes of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience. Now, that is a subconscious program we all have. And I don't know about you, but when I read that definition, I'm like, ugh, like my whole body has a primal reaction of rejection. And the reason why a lot of us have this definition of discipline in our body, aside from it being the little global definition, is that a lot of us, we were raised through behavioralist psychology. Behavioralist psychology basically told your parents that if you don't obey, and you don't fall into line, their morality and their character is put into question. Now I'm really simplifying like 120 years of psychology, but how childhood brain development and parent morality were mixed in when we really like take a moment and think about how messed up that is. So a lot of parents were basically putting kids in time out, giving a spanking, just really feeling this pressure that you have to obey or else you're punished. You have to be disciplined. You have to follow the rules. And it's like a four-year-old child, for example, let's just take an example of a four-year-old child. Their brain is not fully developed and they might come and bite you, okay? And you're like, what a disobedient child. What uh, This child needs to be disciplined. They need to fall in line. But the child's brain isn't developed yet, okay? And then think of the whole process of when you go to school, you don't follow the rules, you are punished. So for a lot of us, and especially those of us like myself, I had to grow up really fast. And one of the first memories I have of just feeling like I really want to have control over my life once I'm an adult, I don't know if you've ever had that, please comment below because it would be nice to know like how many of us actually felt this? I remember I must have been seven or eight and I had this thought like, I cannot wait to be an adult so I can control my environment. I can control what I do, what I don't do because I just wanted that control. And that's a sign that, again, not to sh cause shade on parents because parents do the best they can with what they know at the time that they had, but that also indicates that there is a, a lack of feeling free right? So discipline, ironically, gives us a lot of freedom when we master it. But when we've been disciplined to think otherwise or believe otherwise, because as a child, you are hyper dependent on your teachers, your caretakers, your parents. So when you've had to kind of hand that over, the moment you get it back, it's very natural 
that you just don't want to focus like even though you want to focus does that make sense so i think the first part of this whole process of discipline is to maybe untangle that word a little bit and replace it with devotion devotion to yourself i am a very devoted person when it comes to my health when it comes to my wealth when it comes to my relationships when it comes to my self-love if i just replace that word of discipline with devotion or the word of commitment with devotion it automatically feels a lot more heart-led it automatically just feels like oh this is something i want to be doing <laughs> right and really fundamentally what we really want to get to is replacing discipline with self-love because discipline is one of the highest forms of self-love you show up for yourself because you get to a place of you are a value okay sorry this might sound like this might be feel like a tangent but it's not you are a high value human being i know this without even knowing you first of all you're on this channel you're watching videos on how to be disciplined there is a part of you that knows you have value to offer to yourself to people around you to the life that you desire to live you have value start loving on yourself start loving who you are in this moment who you are in this moment is a beautiful human being you are beautiful there's no need to be perfect. There's no need to have everything figured out. You know, we were just hosting a retreat this weekend and one of the sentences I shared with the ladies that really felt like, okay, maybe we need to remember this. Your life is not a problem to be solved, but a reality to be experienced. You are not a problem to be solved. You are a human being. You are a spiritual being living in a human body, experiencing different facets of reality. To choose to be disciplined is to choose to place your focused attention on the things that matter for you, the things that fuel your soul, the things that allow you to grow. And at the same time, make it make part of that process loving the moment. Because again, I think part of our brain also goes into I need to be better because I'm not good enough as I am right now. Which I don't know, I said again, <laughs> I don't even know if I mentioned that part, but that is literally a part of the process you got to make it a habit to recognize how incredible you are even making the decision that you want to learn to be more disciplined that's freaking incredible you got to like literally pat yourself on the back okay i know it sounds like basic but you got to encourage yourself through it and say wow i am choosing to po put my focus attention on things that matter i'm choosing to do things that allow my soul to grow i'm choosing to learn and fail and make mistakes and really experience the fullness of this life and being devoted and disciplined to the things that i desire is a fundamental component of that now i want to give you some techniques because i think this will really help a lot of the techniques that i share are inside this journal step into the chrysalis i'm going to link it below my life changed when i realized that if i just focus on three things at a time it makes life so much easier what are three things you want to move forward for the next three to six to 12 months is it your fitness is it your business is it your relationships maybe it's fitness business relationships <laughs> maybe it's all three right maybe it is writing a book maybe it is traveling maybe i don't know whatever it is for you like take a moment even comment it below share with different people like what your three areas of life focus are and as you do this break it down into what can feel achievable again in three months, six months, 12 months? Again, in this, in the step in the crystals, we really break it down to make it easier because I am not a very organized human being by nature. So to organize these thoughts on pen to paper has radically helped me showing up to life in general, <laughs> like hands, hands down, right? So you have those three areas of focus. When you wake up every single morning, what is your intention for the day? What is the energy you want to carry forward? Once you have your intention and you have somewhat maybe of, I don't like to use the word to-do list, but things that you got to do or how do you want to experience your day? What are the things that, yeah, you do, you, you do got to do, 
<laughs> you do got to do. You have to maybe go to work. You want to go to the gym. Um, you want to maybe do your grocery shopping. You want to take some time to film a video, write, write a couple of pages of your book or write a paragraph in your book. Take five minutes to visualize your day being successful. And to that end, if you want support with this, an app I highly recommend is the Aura app. It is like the Spotify for meditations and hypnosis. And in fact, there is one that I've been loving. It's called Amazing Day Ahead Morning Visualization. It's literally a five minute meditation. And when you do this, you set yourself up for really wild success. And if you're interested in trying the Aura app for free, I'm going to put a link below where you have seven days of a free trial. And if you enjoy it, you get 25% off. I am very excited to be working with Aura app. I feel like I need to do a whole video on them because they're, it's such an intricate app. You want to spend some time every day visualizing yourself doing the things. There are, I don't know if you've heard of the science of even athletes. Um, I can even link the article below, but they visualize themselves doing the thing. And even pianists, 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 people who play the piano, <laughs> it's been shown that when they imagine themselves playing the piano, it actually rewires their brain the same as if they were to play the piano. Taking some time to visualize yourself doing the things, it gets you into a different, like, headspace and a different body momentum. Why is that even important when it comes to discipline? Because again, we're not here to beat ourselves into obedience. We want to use discipline, our devotion to focusing on the things that we want to do so that it just becomes a natural part of who we are. Think of it this way. When you have very wholeheartedly mastered something like there are people out there to miss a workout is almost like impossible. It doesn't matter how they feel. It doesn't matter what's going on in their life. Working out is a part of who they are. So it takes a level of discipline to originally get there. So they are devoted to their health. They are devoted to their fitness. And over time, through the process of the doing and the visualization, it naturally becomes a part of who they are. So it becomes more effortless. So just to recap, we need a certain level of clarity of direction. We need to start setting up a healthy morning routine. And I am someone, by the way, I it might surprise you, but I don't like a 45 minute to an hour morning routine. I like to say wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> do like 15 20 minutes max i usually sit with my decaf coffee i take a moment to breathe i set my intention i do my visualization maybe a little bit of body stretching actually yeah i do some body stretching i open up my hips and boom i like to get into the day because that's when my brain is the sharpest that's when i have the most momentum so just want to put that out there that you can do a lot of things with your routine in short periods of time then it's also about like a third layer of of choosing to be more disciplined is getting yourself in the right environments, getting yourself in the right room. So again, like let's say for you, it's writing a book or it's getting more fit or it's growing your mindset. Get in a room with people who are doing this already. Like I can't tell you the number of times I have booked myself to a fitness class and it's gotten me to get into the vibes. Or like just a little later today, one of my friends is coming over. We're going to sit side by side to do some work that I've been personally delaying. She's been personally delaying. So we're gonna sit together and do it. Like no one can be disciplined for, for you in the sense that no one can do your workouts for you. <laughs> no one can write your book for you. No one can start your business for you. But in the end, we're human beings. We're not meant to be alone. We are meant to be surrounded by others who support us, who cheer us on. We're meant to feed off of each other's momentum. So anytime you're starting to feel like this meh cycle, get into the vibes of doing it with humans who are also doing it. Environment includes the content you consume. So be mindful of that as well. And I heard this sentence from one of my favorite YouTubers. She said, the more I do something, 
the more I do something. And I've realized that like, wow, what a simple sentence that really does capture it. The more I step into being a little more disciplined, and again, I, I, I just don't like the word discipline, to be more devoted, right? The more I'm devoted to my the visions of my life, I place my focus and attention on what truly matters, the more I place my focus attention on what truly matters. So like giving a basic example of when I do go to the gym, I'm a lot less likely to eat a bunch of garbage after. But if I've spent three days Netflixing and chilling, which by the way has happened to me, it does happen every now and then, like sometimes I just like need to go in my cocoon and just be a hermit. But I do notice that I'm less likely to eat super clean. I'm less likely to do the things. And then it's like, ah, oh, I just got to break out of that mess cycle. So it's about loving yourself, of course, but also really making sure that you are surrounding yourself with the right things. Now, the last piece I feel, this is the foundational piece that I feel like the other things were very important, but this is the one that completely changed the game for me. Like if discipline was hard before, it became a lot less hard after this. Every night for about five to 10 to sometimes 30, depends like what mood I'm in. Every night I do a self check-in. And that I do inside the chrysalis on this page where we have the free writing. Seen, heard, loved. I reflect on the day to see myself, to love myself, to hear the doubts that came, to encourage myself, to say, what am I proud of? What can I stand to improve? And to really have a, like an honest conversation with myself because a lot of times we don't, do the things we meant we want to do because there's some noise inside our mind there's some noise inside our energy and it's so important to dump that noise out again pen to paper just let it out and when you let it out i always wrap it with self-love compassion for the human being that i am and i also call myself out on my bullshit Okay, because sometimes, you know, you just gotta like give yourself a little kick in the touch. Like if I've been Netflixing and chilling for three days and I'm like, I really wanna be fit. It's like, okay, girl, what are you gonna do about it? And the thing is that when you give yourself a process like journaling where you literally see yourself, hear yourself every single day, you are staring at your goals every morning and every night, it literally gets you to move. And what I've been loving also recently, especially with the Aura app, so at night before going to bed, I do this hypnosis that I don't even actively participate in. I literally plug it into my ears and I fall asleep because your brain is a goal-seeking machine. So if you keep staring at your goals and you journal about them and you set your intention in the day you are going to focus on it naturally and your brain is going to find solution your brain is going to find momentum to create pathways to do it it's going to instead of talking you into excuses it's going to talk you out of the excuses and so the hypnosis is the ultimate sleep for attracting success um, again this is in the aura app i'm going to link my the two favorites that i have below because again the aura app there's so much so much options <laughs> So these are my two go-to options at the moment. Um, in case you want to try it out for the next seven days, I highly recommend you just give it a go and see what that feels like to visualize your day and your night visualizing your success. Journal out your thoughts. These are massive, massive game changers and they take not that much effort. Okay, can we be honest? You're sitting down, you're writing, you're plugging in, you're, you're laying back and you're listening, okay? If you can't lay back and listen, like I, I can't help you. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. Um, okay, this is actually the last part. And I know I said this last, the, the last part was the last part and that was the most foundational part, but let me take it back because this last piece is like game over. When you truly take the time to apply this, you will, with everything within you, simply become disciplined in terms of what are the things that you really want to accomplish achieve, master, attract, become. So we just said the brain is a goal-seeking machine. Your brain wants to avoid pain more than it wants to embrace pleasure. This is scientific. 
Thus far, this is how the human brain functions naturally. You can rewire it to be different, but naturally this is how your brain functions. So when we spoke about at the beginning, the definition of the word discipline of like, okay, we need to beat you into obedience, that's painful. Nobody wants that. Nobody really wants that. So if what you want to achieve, even like, let's say going to the gym, it feels like a lot of work. It feels painful. Learning to love yourself, facing your shadows. It feels like a lot of work. It feels painful. Starting your business. It feels like a lot of work. It's painful. Like we can go on and on with the examples, right? What we haven't yet experienced, what we haven't yet mastered feels like a painful challenge. Part of that is going to be diluted by doing the five minute morning visualization of seeing your day going in a successful way. The other part of that is going to come from you putting that pain onto the other side. How do we do that? You have to, and again, we do this inside the crystals, by the way, you have to put the narrative onto the side of if I don't show up for me, if I don't learn to love myself unconditionally, if I don't take the time to put myself out there on YouTube, if I don't start that business, if I don't, really what it comes down to is if I don't dare to fail, because that's what it is. If I don't dare to fail, I'm never going to experience my life. Plain and simple. This is your life, beautiful soul. <laughs> if you don't dare to fail, you don't dare to live. Like, your life is an experience to be experienced. Your soul is on this earth for a finite time in this human body. When you visualize your 80 year old self, you know what the scariest thing for me is? To look back and not have made as many mistakes as I should have. <laughs> to not have been as bold as I wanted to be. To not have made a complete fool out of myself at times to not have dared to even go for it, to not have dared to do the hard things. There's a phrase, do the hard things, you have an easy life. You face your shadow self, you go to the gym, you do those hard things, your life is significantly easier. You, to make hard choices leads to such an easy life. Like the choice to face your shadow self, it, it's, it's hard. Like. Most people don't do it until the life burns to the ground. But it's so much easier to live your life once you face your shadow self. You wanna go to the gym? It's a little painful. You gotta like really, in the beginning, it's like, oh my God, this is really, this is such a challenge. But then you feel so good and you feel strong and you feel vibrant. This is such an easier life to live vibrant and strong versus deteriorated and ugh, right? Hard choices, easy life. Easy, easy choices is, it leads to a hard life. So you gotta play that mindset game with yourself of, okay, if I don't do this hard thing, the hardest part is dying with regret and that's something you can't take back. And I, when you do that, you put the pain onto the other side. And so with all of these said, of course, there are also little mindset hacks. Like sometimes you tell yourself, I'm going to do something for two minutes and then it ends up being 45 minutes. All of those, if you ever you want me to make a video on mindset hacks, that's really how I started my whole business. It's all about mindset hacks. <laughs> Look, comment below. I want to know all about the mindset hacks and it'll be my pleasure to do that. Thank you so much for watching till this point, beautiful soul. I'm sending you so much love and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.